Well, my friends, this is Jay, and this is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. <laughs> I'm back with the project that I promised using the beautiful Victorian zigzag lace stitch from Elizabeth Lobick's beautiful book. Now, when I left, you had a, a nice, uh, well, we had gone through all the rows. We had read the charts. I gave you all kind of tips. And all you had to do was practice, practice, practice. Wasn't that something? <laughs> so now, as a reward for all your practicing, I said I would come back and give you a simple, a really pretty, uh, easy project to from what you've practiced to simply go right into a project and make this beautiful show. So here it is. This is my uh, my uh, Victorian Forever Yours lace shawl. Jay's Victorian Forever Yours lace shawl. And that's what it is. It's Forever Yours. <laughs> Alright, so let me get right into... Um, Let's just do an overview real quick and just talk short quick and then I want to get right into it. First of all, let me just say this. Um, you know, I'm I'm more about uh, the design and stitches and, and putting things together. But for these particular shawls that I will, will be working out of the Shetland Lace uh, book, and there's quite a lot of edge stitching to make shawls, now, if you are on a budget, and uh, you know you, you know you you've got other things to spend your money on. You know you've got rent and food, and maybe you're taking care of grandchildren, and maybe you're taking care of a another a, a spouse or a mother or anything. You know, and if you need to, uh, just look in your stash. These are stash busts busting projects that I'm going to share with you. You don't have to go out and buy anything that you really that's going to cause a problem. So I want you to look in your stash because I have a lot of it. That's the only reason I'm saying it. I'm trying to validate why I have so much of it. <laughs> oh, okay. In your stash because a lot of you I saw did the Hobby Lobby a uh, big yarn sale and yarn haul and all of that. You know, you just, everybody goes, woo, crazy all year. So, <laughs> you know, every year when it comes around. So look and see in your, if you have some Yarn Bee Soft Secret Yarn. Yarn Bee Soft Secret Yarn. Now, I don't, um, like I said, I watch a lot of the uh, people that show their yarn after the sale and everything. But I hardly ever see this yarn being so. And I I fell in love with it a long time ago. Like I said, if for a little inexpensive, uh, but a nice gift you like to give someone who's not knit worthy of that $40 skein yarn, but you still like to make something nice, this is it. I bought a whole bunch, but it doesn't work out. It doesn't work so well for a lot of projects like sweaters and things like that. But it does work well for shawls. If you like shawls, I guarantee you, whatever shawl you knit with this, you will love the drape, the sheen, and the finish. And of course, it's easy care, easy wear. <laughs> now, I'm not sponsored or anything, but I have so much of it. So I'm just trying to justify why I have it. Yarn Bee Soft Secret. And it comes in kaboohoos of colors. So that's what I'm using on this shawl for those that are money wise right now or just need to just keep continue to practice until you buy that special uh, skein of yarn. If you uh, decide on this, go ahead and get at least two skeins. I buy in four because I never know what else I might want to do, uh, but at least two skeins. All right, now let me let's go over this shawl so you can see what I've done. All right, when I left, we had just done the little practice piece, and I got a, I'm on, at the end, I'll have a little surprise about that, but I had just done the little practice piece. It was a very easy little formula. It, it, it was just 16 stitches, three stitches for separation, and then we had a border or a next edge right here. You remember that? All right, 
I'm going to show you how to take that same formula and just change a few numbers and come out with a nice shawl shape. You know, I do this shawl, I guess it's a back, Bactus, B-A-K-T-U-S style. And uh, I guess I learned it when I went started going to knit shops. And it turned out to be an easy style for me to not only remember, but for me to design from and to uh, come up with formulas, how to work the math. Because you simply go up one side, go across the back, and then down the other side. Increase up across the back with no increases and decrease down and then I've learned over the years how to manipulate the numbers and come up with a different different fitting shawl this one is going to be a little more like on the crescent style instead of the long 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 one that I do sometimes this is going to have a little hint of crescent that we've done before so before let me go ahead and show you a little bit of it just so that you can see the lace. I'm going to hold it up. It's the same lace that you just practiced. Can you see that? I can't see the camera right now, but I hope you can see how that lace is the exact same lace. But if you notice, this shawl, I have changed the beginning because, like I say, we want to increase up and so you can see that it starts out with a little small narrow and then as you look it, go, it widens out, 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 out and increases as it goes up. And then I can pull it down and you can see how it increases even more. Now, of course, I'm not finished with mine, but I have enough so that I'm ahead of you so that I can go ahead and get you started. Oh, we lost Bird there. There you go, Bird. So that you can get started on yours. All right, so now um, let's go to our um, let's go to our little formula sheet, our little information sheet. All right, hold on, and I'll be right back. All right, now this color may look blue, or the shawl may look blue on the camera, but it's really a beautiful violet. So, in case you wanted to know what of uh, this uh, soft secret I'm using, the color is simply violet. So it's a very luxurious and uh, uh, jewel tone color. Very pretty, just right for as we slowly start to work our way out of summer. Um, here in Georgia, our schools will be starting, I think, in August. So as we're working our way towards the cooler season, this color will work just beautiful. All right, now, instead of typing up one, I just wrote this one so that I can go ahead and get this on. Because we have a, you know, we've worked up some and, and I can, I just want to keep it really simple. So I'm going to pull in a little bit so that we can read my little information sheet. Just so that you can have something, you know, people like to have something they can look at. I'll go back on the video and, and check and make sure that they understood or got the information right. Alright, so now listen. This is, like I said, the zigzag stitch. The lace section has 16 stitches. We already know that because we've been practicing it. I had suggest using up number 8 size needles to keep the fabric. It's nice and loose, but yet you can see um, you can see the it has great definition on the lace. You can actually see the yarn overs. Uh, you know, they'll look really nice. And with a, like a number three weight or lighter weight yarn, not a not a not our regular number four, like when we do our sweaters. Just try to go down a little bit. And remember, I had Jay's working formula, and I have already gone through it. Now it's the same formula that we just used. We're just going to use the numbers, the uh, uh, a few of the numbers in different ways, or change them. So, for instance, out of the book, this is her part. She gave us 16 stitches for the lace. So when you're designing, you, I use stitch books. So I take what they give me and then I add the rest. Alright, I also decided on 6 stitches for a border, just like on the practice piece. And I'll show you when we get down here, we're going to work the same um, border stitches. Alright, the, stitch, the only thing we're changing is right here in the center. This little center column right here, that represents like the center of the shawl. Before I had an X, but this time I'm going to put a plus or minus. 
So this lets you know that this is the section that we will increase in as we go up. Then we'll go across with no increases. And then we will minus decrease down the opposite side. Now, depending on how wide or, or how fast you want your shawl to grow, here are the numbers that I normally use for this style shawl. This one is, the one right here that I'm working on, is I put number three. Odd numbers work better for me, I don't know why, but number three. But if you are, if you want your shawl a little wider and to grow a little faster, then simply change three to a five. Does that make sense? And then if you are just a tall person, this is where if you're really, you know, five, seven, five, eight, you're just a taller person and say, Jay, I need, I, I want this shawl to, to give me a little more in my, for my body, for my shoulders when I get to the back. Go ahead and change that number to a seven. So you can have three, five, or seven. Everything else stays the same. So now when you add my formula to know how many stitches to cast on if you put three you're going to cast on 25 if you use the number five you'll simply cast on 27 stitches or if you're the taller person you will cast on 29 stitches and then just knit two rows now how easy is that does that make sense can you see that all right you just simply knit, knit two rows and of course, wait for me there. The border will be the same that we're using the practice piece. Six stitches, and here's what the border represents. Knit three, knit two together, yarn over, knit one. You will do that on every right side row, just like you were doing. On the wrong side, you'd simply knit. Another thing that's different on this shawl is we will have increase rows. We will have rows that we need to increase increase into. So on this shawl, every time we come to row one, you will increase, except the first row one. And I'll explain that as we get as we do a little sample. But row one and row five. Every time row one and row five, we will do an increase into this number that you've added or that you've picked out right there. Alright, so now I've just kind of gone over that. You can see again. You can just look at it even from the side. You can see how it increases up. So now I want to, let's see, what should we do next? Well, I want to get into a little bit of, um, I'm not going to repeat the stitch. First of all, how do you like this format? I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to learn. <laughs> I'm trying to change what needs to be changed so instead of having the stitch and all of this all together I did the stitch I can give you more information I can really help you to I can break it down for you as we get into harder stitches because we need to start moving into a lot more complicated and intricate stitches and then do a, the tutorial or a special project so this is the project so uh, let me switch this and then I'm going to bring back a little sample piece and then tell you the next step. Back in just a minute. Alright, real quick, I'm going to just kind of get you started just to make sure that you're, uh, you know, taking, uh, repeating the steps and that you have everything in order. Of course, here's our chart again. And it's the same exact chart that we worked the lace from before. And this time I have cast on, you've either cast on depending on how many, what was the number you used in the center. I used three, so I cast on my 25 stitches, just like I did on the practice piece. Now, I start and I work the border. I do row one, row two back. Now, uh, of course, when we start, we can't increase in row one the first time. But as I continue to work across, I can increase the next row that I'm going to increase in is row 5. Row 1 and row 5 are the rows that we will increase in. So now I am up to I am up at row 5 on this little sample. Let's see can I see it if I'm in the if I'm in a good place or do I need to move it over? Let's see if I maybe if 
if I just back out a little bit. All right, and reposition things. How about that? All right, so now let's go. So, like I said, I'm just going to repeat just what I need to just to make sure. So, now we have a border, of course. You remember our little border, so I could have had that done, but I'll go ahead and do it again. I knit three. Remember, on every right side row. One, two, three. Then I knit two stitches together. You're probably seeing it in your sleep. <laughs> then I yarn over and knit one. Now, on this shawl, it's for ever your shawl, here is the increase where we're going to increase up. I'll slide the marker. I'm using three stitches. If you had five, it will be the same. If you have seven, it will be the same. You will go to the third stitch from the marker. Here's the marker. I used a white. Maybe I should have used another color. But maybe you can see my marker there. I'll just bring it up. All right. And I'll change it in a minute maybe. But here's my marker. No matter what number you put here, you go to the third stitch from the marker. One, two, three. See, so here's the third stitch. And for me, I use three. And this is row five. So let me move my little, because I'm going to maybe knit it for you. So I'm going to move it up so we can see it. All right. So even though I only have three, I still do the exact same thing, whether it was five or seven. So in that third stitch from the marker, I simply knit into the front, pivot the needle, and knit into the back. Tighten up, and then knit on to the next, to your lace marker. So I have, for me, I have increased row five, because I couldn't increase the first row one. We just got started. I have increased it already from three to four stitches. One, two, three, four. Already. Slide my lace marker, and then I continue working row five. It says knit seven. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, and seven. I just love doing it so much. I'm sorry. Yarn over. <laughs> sip, sip, knit. I'm reading and working row five of the chart, the same one you've been practicing. All right, now, of course, knit three, one, two, and three. And then again, I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to do the slip. Oh, let me show you. I, I, I may have cut this part out of the first video. All right, some of you, in case you might say, well, Jay, that's not how I do a slip, slip, knit. No, the usual way is to slip one and then slip the next stitch. Then take your needle and go back and go back through the front of both stitches. But see how it, sometimes that gets so cumbersome and then you're having to move your wrist around. So, you could also do it just like I, when I want to kind of, you know, get my rhythm and I want to just move a little faster. I have that yarn over. Now watch, I simply take the right hand needle and go through the back loop of both stitches. And I'm in the same, in the same order. And I knit through the back loop. Slip, slip, knit. Now my needle is still pointing in the same direction, and I cut out one whole step. What do you think about that? All right, the rest of row five, it says knit three. After I do that slip, slip, knit, one, two, and three. Now check, you should have four stitches left. One, two, three, four. You see them? All right, I have a double yarn over, then a slip, slip, knit. These are just little things I thought about. <laughs> I thought, well, some people might not say, well, Jay, that ain't, that's not a slip, slip knit. Okay. See, man, this is so, I'm sorry, it is so humid. I am pouring water on my hands. All right, slip, slip knit. I'll get it in there. And then the last stitch is knit two stitches together because it's leaning to the right. And you can see I'm struggling a little bit tonight. I thought it would be a little even worse if I use a bamboo. So these are little uh, painter's drill, you know, dream little needles that I used to buy a lot. All right, so there's row five. 
So now you will continue to follow the chart all the way up, back down to row one. The next time you come to row one, then you make your next increase in the third stitch, wherever it is, from the from the marker. So count back one, two, three. So I would make it in that stitch, the third stitch from the marker. And then of course you do the same thing on row five and continue row one, row five, row one, row five, and your shawl will start to grow. Everything else is the same. Does that help? All right, let me see what else I need to do and uh, I'll be right back. All right, so now the next thing I need to share with you. All right, so now you've you started, you found some new yarn, you had your practice, now you're ready to move to the yarn that you want to make this forever your shawl. All right. Now, how, well, Jay, how do I determine how far to go? Okay. Remember on the little simple crescent shawl, it's, well, everybody didn't do it, so you know, may not have done it. So, uh, I'm on, this, this is as much as I can get into my camera frame. But on the little shawl, I shared with you before how to get this little simple crescent, just a hint. We're not doing short rows. This is just an easier, simpler way to make a very simple shawl. Remember, I'm trying to keep things simple. All right. You take and you take this end of the shawl, put it in your hands, and stretch your arm a full length out from your body. And you would keep knitting this shawl. Keep knitting, keep knitting, until you, to this section right here, you keep increasing, increasing, and knitting up until this crosses over your cleavage line. Here's my cleavage. Here's my arm stretched out. I've got it lined up to my body like this. Can you see it a little bit on camera? I have it lined up. I'm holding it. And then I'll just keep knitting, 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 and keep going until I cross or come to my front cleavage, the center of my body. How about that? And for me, it took 21 of these little scallops. It, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm fluffy, but I'm short. <laughs> so when I counted and I reached enough that I want to stop, that I said, okay, I'm at the center of my body. All right. It took 21. So I stopped and I put a marker there. I says, okay, I'm ready to stop now. And I'm on row one, getting ready to start going across the back which there will be no increases. I increase up until I cross the cleavage line or the center of my body and just count your stitches and see, you know, your little scallops. Now, I could have gone one more and maybe done 30. Make it even. If you like, in fact, I might do that. You know, I can do that. I just like, when you're going up and you're, and you're decreasing down, it's nice to have an even number. It's easy to remember. So, I have, oh, not, not 30. This was 21. Let's see, 20, 21, so I could do one more so it comes out even. Instead of 21, have 22. Does that make sense? I botched it a little bit. I counted my little scallops, and I got up to 20, 19, 20, and I just went ahead and did one more for some reason. But I think I will do two more. I think I'll do one more to make it uh, 20, um, 21, 22, an even number. So when I get ready to decrease, all I have to do is just count my little scallops and it will be an even number, 22. So that's how you decide how long to make the first leg or section of this uh, style shawl. Hold it just like I said, work it up to your cleavage and then make this side even. So I'm going to do one more row off camera and make it 22. Now, once I reach that number, then you'll stop increasing. And this is the fun part that will, um, that I work in my shawls when I'm designing. Remember this number that everyone had to pick a number, either three, five, or seven. All right. So for me, I will simply go across the back. I will put three repeats, rows one through eight. One, row one through eight, two, row one through eight, three times with no increases across the back. The person that had five, you will repeat it five times. The person that did seven, you will repeat it seven times. No increases or anything. Then you put a mark, and of course, 
once we put the mark, we will be ready to start the decrease side. Does that make sense? Did I explain it okay? So for me, I'm just going to add this one more repeat just to make mine 22 so I can have an even number. Even numbers going up and down, but an odd number across the back. It always works. It looks so nice. So for me, I will do three repeats, and then I will stop and wait for you as you work your shawl because we have quite a bit of work to do. But the main thing is to get enough length by stretching it across your, the length of your arms and all the way up to the center of your body or your cleavage line. Does that make sense? Once you get used to it, it's a lot easier, you know, like I said, we're not really ready to get into shawl rolls. Some people are not ready to get into that right now, but this is a way to give a nice simple shawl. A just a hint of a body crescent, just a shape, and then we will uh, start the decrease side. So that's where we are, and that's the work we have to do, including me. <laughs> I've worked at one side, so I'm ready to start my back, and I only have to do three repeats. Now, one last thing before I stop this video, I want to show you something, something special. Back in just a minute. Okay, so. Even though I'm changing the format of my tutorials, trying to isolate the stitches and, and not have it all on one video, but I still want to make it interesting so that you will hopefully give the projects a try. And I'm calling this end section, more bang for your bucks. <laughs> I want you to get as much out of a stitch as possible. Now some people, this just, they're just like, what's next, what's next? Okay, I, I, what's next? Okay. But if you're the person like me, I want to know, well, you know, Jay, since I've learned this, I, you've invested practice time. You've got a little project. You've got a stitch. It's more than a swatch. Well, what else can I do, Jay? I, I, I like this. Oh, I think I'm going to make my sister one. Oh, you know what? I'm going to make my mother one. Oh, I think she'll like this. Well, hi, what else? I don't know if I want to do that shawl, though. I don't know if I'm ready to do all that going up and then going across. I, but I understood this because it was just like a long scarf. Let me show you the more bang for your bucks. All right, we can turn this simple. We'll, I guess we'll call this one. This is the one we practiced on. This is the one I started to give you more than a swatch. We'll say this was a scarf. And we just, I told you, just keep going and keep going till it was long enough to kind of put it around your neck or your shoulders. See, it's just like a scarf. Well, let me show you this. Supposing we want to make a wrap and make it a really pretty lacy wrap. Did you know that you can turn this lace so that the lace is on the ends? Let's see, can I get it just right now? Wait, I'm gonna back out. Let me see, can I back out? Oops, going the wrong way, sorry. You know, my backing skills aren't it great. <laughs> Alright, so now here's the same shawl with the lace pointing or facing in towards the body. In towards the center of your body. Here's in. The other way we had it, I just turned it around. The other way, the lace was pointing to the outside, to your shoulders. Okay? Well, this way, you could just make it flip back into a collar around your neck. Like this. Look, look, wait, wait. Don't get excited yet. Wait, you got to get it all in here. And so you could do this. Oh my gosh. Where's my flower? Woo! There we go. Look at that. Now I'm going to bring it up. A, no, I don't want to bring it too close. So I want you to see the whole thing. All right. Can you see it? Does my camera need to point down a little more or something? I think it's okay. So this will go around your neck. All I did was just change. If I want to change back to the other way, I simply turn the shawl, just turn it around, and put the smooth edge right here. Does that make sense? To the center of the body. Don't have much room here to get. And the lace is on your pointing towards your shoulder, right? 
Now I want to change and put the lace in the center of my body. Let's see, can I remember how to do it? Then you just turn it so the lace is towards the center. You don't flip it over. You don't flip it on the wrong side. You turn it. I just can't organize it here really well. Should have moved that box. And now the lace is pointing to the inside and then I can pull this down just like I shared with you. Flip this back. It becomes a collar. The only thing is, okay, I think you need more room on these smooth edges on this side here, on this part, to make it worth your while or to make it more like a wrap with a big pretty collar. Do you remember my helping hand shawl? It's the exact same design or design style or principle. I had that so uh, I'll link that and you can go and look at it. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. Just kind of move the cursor down or along the line till you kind of find what you need. So let me give you a bonus working formula how you can simply change or add a few numbers and make this beautiful. We're going to call this the zigzag wrap. <laughs> or the, or well, let's see, instead of um, Victorian lace shawl, Victorian um, lace forever yours wrap. Here's the wrap if you like a wrap and not a shawl. Where you have a lace where you can just simply turn the lace to the inside of the body and have a, a collar. Put your flower there. Oh my gosh. Oh, I can't wait. All right, here we go. This is the bonus because I like to share with you. Now I'm going to pull in just a little bit so I can. Okay, here we go. This is all the change that I needed or that you will need to make to make this. The lace is the same. It's out of the stitch book. Elizabeth Lovix, Shetland Lace. We're still working in this same book. Have you forgotten? <laughs> I guess you think, Jay, has, have you just gone rogue? I kind of have. But it's still Elizabeth's, the stitch where I got the the idea. You know, the stitch. But now I'm adding my own idea here with this with this wrap. So I know it's 16. Okay, well, why ponder? Well, what else can I, what should I do? Just take the same, remember, always look or use what you already have. Work in the in the space that you already have created you know this stitch now if you work this practice you know this stitch you may not be doing it perfect yet but that's to be allowed we are practicing people we are growing our skills so you can take 16 and put the 16 right here put another 16 put another 16 right here and when you add that up that's a cast on a 48 and if you like taller broad in the shoulder Put another 16. You don't have to stop at just these three. You can have four 16s. You can have five 16s. <laughs> but the lace will still stay the same. All this you will just knit, 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 knit. Now I can break it up and put in an eyelet row. An easy eyelet row to remember only takes three stitches. Knit two together. Let's see. Well, let me write it out. Maybe I should write it out. But, it don't, but really, it just takes a good um, two stitches. Knit two together, yarn over, knit one. Let me write that on here so you'll remember. This is in case you want to do an eyelet row. Hold on, let me just write on, write on my own thing. Okay. Um, knit two together, yarn over, knit one. Equals three stitches. All right. So let me make sure I'm on camera. So, uh, all right. So, everywhere that I have a line, that means you can put a marker there. That's how I design. You know, this is my working formula. This is line represents the number of of uh, I start set chains. Well, it does in crochet, but when I'm knitting, that's my cast on number. So if I have 16, 16, 16, and add that up, that gives me 48 stitches of cast on. I can increase this number to four 16s or five whatever every time I get to one of where the 16 stops okay you will have to you will need to add three stitches here everywhere you want a marker you will add 
three when you do the count. So when I cast on, okay, when I, well, I, you don't need one, um, you don't need this one. See, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing this on the fly. The one right next before you go into the lace, you don't need that one. But any of these others, if you add others, all you have to do is add three stitches. So 48, 49, 50, 51. So my new cast on number, if I decided to put a yarn over or an eyelet row right here where I have a marker, does that make sense? By adding three stitches and those three stitches, I will knit 16 and then out of the three stitches, I knit two together, yarn over, knit one. Have a marker. Then I knit the next 16. The reason you don't have to knit the six, put a mark, uh, put an extra stitches right here before the lace, because the lace already has an eyelet row. It's already included in the lace. If you look right here, here's my eyelet row right there by the lace. I didn't put that eyelet row. This is the one that you will put in if you want to have a bunch of 16 segments. You'd have to remember to add three stitches. Okay where I have a marker line. But see how the lace has its own eyelet row. I didn't have to put one there. So that's what I was... I hope I hadn't botched this because I got excited. Sorry. <laughs> All you have to do, I'll hold this before the camera so you can see it. If you think you might want to make and change yours instead of the shawl. You're not ready for the shawl yet. That's a little too much knitting for you. Uh, you know, this is a really really good lace to learn even though I broke it down for you but it is you you are a lace knitter <laughs> if you accomplish this so but every time you add, except for this mark here that marker you don't have to add the extra stitches it's already included in the lace but if I add one here and here and here however many I want right above that line put a three so you remember you add all the stitches and then go back and add those you'd add those uh, those three stitches to your cast on number so my this cast on number for me will become 51 so I might as well do that so I just draw a line and put 51 so right up under my 48 if I decided to add an eyelet row between these two 16s I'd have, uh, have to have three extra stitches or you can just knit across, knit to the marker that has a lace. The lace makes its own eyelet row and then work the lace. You don't even have to separate. You can just have 51 stitches or 48 stitches and just knit all the way across till you get to your lace. Have a marker, slide the marker, start the lace. Easy peasy. And then this side of this pretty wrap that I'm sharing with you this side will grow will be out here over towards your shoulders and then that's when you can wear this pretty turn the turn it back for a collar so that you can have a beautiful lace collar with more rows on the shoulder side and your flower and that is your surprise and bonus. So what do you think of that? <laughs> is that not more bang for your bucks? And we're still in the same stitch. Everybody's growing. Everybody's learning. Everyone is practicing. Everyone, everywhere, every size. <laughs> we are practicing. Practicing to our to improve our designing skills, to know how to just move. Don't look for something new all the time. Always look at what you've already learned in the, just like I shared with you, on the chart. Pick something that you already understand, that you're already working. Learn how to isolate stitches. Learn how to make stitches work for you more than one way. And this is, I didn't, I'm glad I didn't show you the first time because after I thought about it, I thought, oh, I forgot to show them how to, then I thought about, oh, no, and that's when I came up with the idea, well, you know what, they could have a nice wrap if I show them the, the simple math, how to do it. Simple math, simple, simple. 
So now, it's up to you which one you want to do. <laughs> when I have time, I'm going to do, I will definitely do the wrap because I like this pretty lace up here. Oh, I wear some of my pins. Y'all got, I need to do a video on just pins and buttons. <laughs> I think I will one day when, just for filler videos when you don't have anything else. You can always do pins and buttons or something like that. Well, this is Jay. I have enjoyed your company tonight. So had the cicadas. I let the window down. I'm burning up, but they just keep on cricking, cricking, whatever sound they make. But I have enjoyed your company. I hope you are getting as much out of this as I am. I hope you uh, uh, like the new format. And thank you so much for all of you who are have just shared my video. I just have so many new people that I'm meeting every day, every morning I get up and I've got someone new. Jay, I just found you. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I just found, oh my goodness. Ah, oh. so I even found a new friend. His name is Rock and Roll. <laughs> so, you know, I was a little curious. I said, well, do you knit? He says, yeah, I've been knitting for about four months now or something. And I found your videos. I said, well, come on aboard. You know, that sounds great. I welcome him aboard. So, Oh, I don't have many guy things, but, you know, I'm trying to work up some little ideas, but we'll share those later. This is Jay, and this is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam, and I am, like I said, I just want you to get as much out of this as possible, and I encourage you to lay it all out there and give it a try. It's just yarn, people. There's nothing to lose. Start out on the level you can afford and then stretch yourself as you learn so to everyone everywhere besides happy knitting and i'll see you soon bye bye <laughs>